softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to the Fast Pitch TV Show. I'm your host, Gary Leland. Now, if you found our show on Facebook, your Apple TV, or any other video sharing device, please check out my website at fastpitch.tv. It's the home of the Fast Pitch TV Network and the place to find all my softball video channels and my softball blogs. I think at this time we have seven video channels and 11 blogs on the network, so please check them out. And all these blogs and video channels, they're all dedicated to one thing, and that's fast pitch softball, so check them out. Now, earlier this year, I was at Softball Con in Louisville, Kentucky. I was at the first Softball Con last year, but boy, I got to tell you, it's grown a whole bunch since 2011. It's a great convention every year so far it has been. You need to check out their website at softballcon.net. Now, this week, I'm going to start a series of videos from two-time Olympian Jessica Mendoza. She gave a great clinic on slapping at Softball Con this year, and I'm going to bring you what part one of the clinic right after this word from my sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-stale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham! You just put a cool $30 in your pocket. How do I decide if I should switch my daughter to the left side? Um, when do I decide that? Um, and so that was something I wanted to kind of cover in the beginning. Um, I think obviously it applies to you know the different athlete, um, what they're good at. Um, one of the things that you know I, I put on here was that the classic, you know, the really fast player that kind of maybe struggles with power. So you see her on the right side, she's so athletic, she's maybe your center fielder, she does a great job maybe with the drag butt, gets down the first baseline fast, so you're thinking, let's switch her over, let's make her a slapper. That's fine too, but what I'm seeing as the game is evolving, is it, don't just make them a slapper. And I wanted to say this in the beginning as we go over all the aspects to be a successful slapper, um, but what I'm seeing, even at the younger level, is, you know, Defenses are ready for that. It's no longer a shock to have even, I don't care how fast she is, if she has no diversity to her game, you're going to be able to play that and she's going to be very limited in what she's able to do. Um, this game is difficult, so you don't want to wait until you know, they're in college to learn how to hit, to be able to learn um, the different parts of slapping. So don't just you know, sort of pull outside and then you know, let her tap the ball and run, but actually have some diversity within the slap. Um, some other different types is, you know, the power hitter. I mean, that's me. That is me. I mean, there might be some of you here, especially if you know me, you're going, okay, Jess, like, you're a hitter. You know, I don't see you slap a whole lot. Why, why are you lecturing on slapping? Um, well, I think, honestly, me of all people is someone that has really learned the game of slapping because I, I was the opposite. I was riding, switched the left side as a hitter. So I was a hitter first. And then when I got to about 12, 13 years old is when I started to really develop my short game. And because of that, I felt like I was able to learn so much more because I was coming from the hitter's mindset to now being able to add that, that different aspect of my game. Um, and it's something that I'm still learning. I love watching Caitlin Lowe and Natasha Watley, who bat before me on the pride. Um, two different types of slappers. I'm always picking their brain, watching their video of their own slaps, because there's nothing better than me then to be successful in all these different areas. So to kind of start, um, it starts with the footwork. And this plate, um, I gotta switch it because it's driving me. <laughs> Never have a backwards plate when it goes back. Um, so to so start first with the short game is your footwork. So very similar to the drag one. In fact, it's pretty much exactly the same as the drag one, which is perfect because the thing with slapping and bunning is you want them to want them to look seamless. You don't want to ever tip anything off. Even as a hitter, you want to try to be later rather than earlier so that you're not letting everyone know what you're doing. So the first movement as a slapper is going to be bringing your front foot back. And what this does for, it's twofold. First, for a hitter like me, it's a little wider in my stance. It gets me into a narrow, narrower, narrower position so that I'm able to now be more of a sprint explosive position. Secondly, it's also a great timing mechanism. 
So what this does, by bringing my back foot back, I'm able to now adjust to different wind-ups, change up, different velocities, speeds, different motions that the pitcher is doing, instead of just going straight into my slap. I don't have a lot of room, so sorry guys if I end up in your lap in a second. But I don't want to go straight from here into my crossover slap, because if anything happens, right, if the pitcher throws a change, I'm already three steps gone, and I have no way to slow myself down. I'm gonna to get to that next step because you want it to be explosive. You never want it to be a reading step. This is my reading step, is that first movement. So here I'm reading, I'm adjusting, I'm getting into the slap position. I can now see a lot more of what the pitcher's gonna give. Then my next step is gonna be bringing my left foot across. And a lot of you can't see, but when I bring my left foot across, I'm thinking about bringing my heel across instead of my toe. Number one thing I see with slappers is they're ready to get to first base before they're ever ready to make contact. It's all about speed, 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 get out of the box, get to first base. That's what's in their mind. It's even in my mind. I catch myself all the time leaving way too early because you want to get there so fast. So a good key is to think about bringing my heel forward because that will automatically put my foot into this position instead of what the position it wants to get into, and that's face the pitcher. It'll also put me into a perfect position to get my belly button and body square to the plate. So on an outside pitch, any pitch, but specifically that outside pitch that if I get into that crossover position and start heading towards first, now I'm very weak on the outer portion of the plate. So I wanna make sure that I can heal. So I always think, bring my heel forward, and then, and then that's the position that usually you'll see if a hitter wants to choke up, or for a drag bunner, that's when I drop my, my hands. Now I know we're talking slapping, but I want to show kind of the, the difference in the slap because the footwork's exactly the same, but here with my bunt, I'm just going to get to that position with my back step. Now, um, I'm going to get into the hands a little bit later, but I want to make sure that once I come forward and I'm staying square, that importance of the crossover. The crossover I like to think of is that mentality when I'm going to steal second base. You know, you get into that, that mode where, you know, the pitch is rocking, and just as you're about to go, you just explode. My first three steps, I am taken off. That is the same mentality I need to have as a short game. So as I'm coming across with this back step, this crossover step, now from here, everything is exploding. For me, I take it towards the five, six hole, make contact, and I'm gone. So it's a very explosive, quick, now granted, it's all happening in a step and a half, so I don't want you to picture a, a slapper exploding and running and now she's halfway towards the shortstop and obviously completely out of her realm. That's where, that's how late all of this is happening. And a lot of this is talking about, you know, kind of where they need to be. Now there's a process in getting there, but to get to that advanced level where the timing is just right, where I can bring my front foot back and now explode with this crossover, I wish I could do it without killing myself, <laughs> really explode with that crossover. So now, that's the whole point of why I'm moving, is to have that momentum. So understanding, I see a lot of slackers, more so in practice, they get very, you know, like, gosh, it's almost like they're ballet dancing. They're just very like, light on their feet and cute, and they're not really trying to drive that crossover. I mean, that's the point of it, using that momentum. You want to make sure your toe is up. This is like perfect, you know, obviously, once they're going into their mechanics, they're not going to, but when you're teaching a slapper, teach them correctly, and the difference between getting their toe up and having their toe down is that movement I just showed you. Being able to explode, my toe is up, I'm able to pound. I'm probably going to break the stage before it's over, but it's okay. That's the effect. My toe is up, I'm able to plant the ball on my foot and really drive and use the ground. So if you can picture my foot here, driving, hitting the ground and pushing off versus here, would you be surprised at how many crossovers the foot is here? So now when I go down, that's where you get that ballerina type movement, where they're almost walking on their tiptoes and being very light footed instead of driving, not being afraid to break a stage because that's how explosive they're trying to be. Um, when I talked about stealing a base, now with the, the hands, 
This is something that I actually just recently learned, probably the last two years. Um, I've always been taught as a slapper that basically the variance of choking up is kind of what your soft slap, placement slap versus your power slap. So meaning, the more I choke up, the softer the slap, which is true. But the last couple of years, I've learned the focus should not be so much on where my hands are placed as it should be on where I make contact with the ball. So something I'm, you know, kind of for a topic of conversation, not saying one is right or one is wrong, but I think the higher level, when we're talking about the true way to not let anyone know what I'm trying to do, if I focus more on where I make contact instead of where I place my hands, no defense is going to know what I'm doing until I do it. And that's the idea. Now the younger level, obviously, you know, just putting the ball in play is really the ultimate goal. Getting saved could be a bonus. Um, but I always believe in teaching them the correct way and at least knowing what they're trying to do. If they want to choke up, fine. But maybe in addition to choking up, know where to make contact based on what they want to do. So for example, for a soft slap, normally I would choke up as far as possible and just do my normal routine of coming through the ball. Because I choked up, obviously I have less power. And because of that at contact, I'll have a soft slap. That works. But if I'm trying to be deceptive, not let people know what I'm trying to do, I'm going to keep my hands where they're at. Maybe choke up a little bit, which is where I would for any kind of slap. And now I'm going to try to aim at making contact with the end of my bat. Again, higher level. I know a lot of you thinking, OK, I'm trying to get my nine-year-old how to learn how to slap. And you're telling me not only to make contact, but try to find the two inches of the bat to make contact with? This is where you need to just start communicating them. Get them to understand this is ideally just like hitting. I mean, you want them just to be able to make contact and put the ball to play at a young age, but you're still teaching them the correct mechanics, mechanics to do that. So by hitting, slapping the ball at the end of the bat, it is nowhere to not only die, but it's going to have that funky, fun spin that slappers just love. That crazy, I don't know where the ball's going, as a defender, you're coming in to charge it, and the last thing you want to do is touch it. You want to just get a big giant stick and try to stab it. That's, that's the idea. And the more, you'd be surprised. It sounds like it's something difficult, but the more that you're able to practice, meaning start on the tee, set, set the, the tee up, and literally have them walk through, coming here, soft slap, hit, sl slapping the ball at the end of the bat with the tee. Do about 10, 10 of those reps, inside, middle, outside. They'll be able to kind of feel exactly where their hands need to be and what footwork they need to use to be able to slap that ball on the end of the bat. The best part about it is you don't change anything. The only thing you change is contact. But your hands, everything from the defensive point of view looks the same until I make contact and now you've got to try to kill that little ball that's squiggling all over the place. Have you heard about the great softball coaches clinic that Fast Pitch TV is hosting? They have a great lineup of speakers, including softball pitching great Kat Osterman. See all the speakers at www.fastpitch.tv slash clinic. I'm sure this clinic's going to sell out quick, so get your ticket today. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed part one of Jessica's clinic. Make sure and come back next week and watch part two of the clinic, okay? Now, if you have an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android phone, you need to get the Fast Pitch TV Show app today. Just go to your phone's app store, search softball, or, or fast pitch, and you'll find it. Now, don't forget to check out our new skills video channel at coacheslook.com. That's coacheslook.com. It's a great way for high school players to get noticed by college coaches. So that's really about it for today. So until next week, this is Gary Leland saying goodbye, and thanks for watching. This show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV Network.